Hey there, speculators. It is Rod, your Futures Fanatic. Welcome back to the Futures Fanatic channel here on YouTube. Futures Fanatic is part of my company called Traders Dev Group, TDG, where we provide futures education for active traders. Hey, uh, this is going to be a kind of a mailbag edition. If it's your first time here to the channel, maybe uh, you'll enjoy just a quick catch up as I answer some comments. I really appreciate everybody that's uh, commenting. Uh, on the videos it starts a nice conversation and that's the whole purpose of me doing these videos is to help people get introduced to the best asset class for active trading which is the futures markets so let's go ahead and jump in we'll take a look at some of the comments and uh, I forgot to mention like I said if it's your first time here to the channel and you want to learn more about active day trading and specifically how the futures markets work for that and all the advantages you can hit that subscribe like the video would be fantastic and then leave a comment if you have any questions even on this mailbag comments edition all right so the first comment here is on the video i did about the best platforms for futures trading where i encouraged folks to suggest some other platforms and glenn katz was nice enough to write a long comment here i won't go through the whole thing he's from canada but he was mentioning that he uses multi-charts with amp and multi-charts was not a platform that I happened to uh, mention. Interestingly enough, this platform here, TradingView, which I talk about all the time on the channel, in fact, there'll be some uh, comments in this video right here where I'll go into things on TradingView. Uh, it's actually run, started, and fully coded by the folks that did uh, multi-charts to begin with. So multi-charts and AMP, a good uh, alternative or additional platform to uh, to take a look at and if you go over to navigate your way to this particular video here on the channel you can read this comment in more detail if you'd like next comment was from jano gano g h a n o 93 why are you trading 20 micros instead of two e-minis i get this question all the time if you're not familiar with the difference between a micro and a mini you can kind of think of it as Let's say if it was shares and you or options contracts where you had to buy one contract and it represented 100 shares, but you could buy something one tenth the size that might only represent 10 shares. Well, that's kind of the, the way minis and micros work in the futures market. So uh, a one e-mini contract for something like the S&P or the Dow um, <clears throat> is going to trade in a certain dollar and tick inc increment and now there's micros which are one tenth the size so what this gentleman or what this person's asking is why would you trade 20 micros when you could trade two the equivalent same size because the micros are going to have a lot higher commissions if you trade 20 things you trade a transaction cost on 20 different trades uh, you're going to pay a much higher transaction cost than if you just did it on two trades. And yes, there are still commissions, fees, and transaction costs in the futures markets, whereas a lot of stock trading has seemingly gone to no commission or no fee trading. It's not always exactly the case. You don't know, There's no such thing as free lunch, but that's for another day. So there are commissions here. So why do I do it? Well, if you take a look at one of my primary trading styles, which I won't go into tonight, which is sort of mean reversion using a volume profile histogram um, over here on TradingView and trading highs and lows. Mean reversion simply means that when things get above or below a certain uh, level, you're looking for price to revert. So you're often selling highs and buying lows. And it's very hard to pick tops and it's very hard to pick bottoms. So what um, my trading style is, is to campaign or scale in to trades and it's a lot easier to do that with micros it allows me to build a position that would be the equivalent of um, that two contract size but if i was trading full contracts i only have one decision or maybe two decision points for that scale in whereas when i'm trading micros it gives me a lot more flexibility also i sort of built this channel um, and began uh, working with folks in the in the futures world again specifically because of the micros I think they provide a lot more flexibility, their size in such a way that uh, people can control the risk a lot better. And it's predominantly what we trade in the TDG Pro Trade Room on a daily basis, just because most people feel more comfortable with it. But yes, 20 micros is the equivalent of two minis. But for me, it's mostly a matter of being able to scale in and scale out of positions. So that's why we trade the micros. All right, the next one. Hey, on, again, on the on the platforms stuff. Thank you very much for this video. It was very useful. I watched it to the end. Um, do you know if TradeAbate works for citizens in Europe? And the answer is I don't because when I came over here, they prov wow, I look washed out right there. Back away from the light. Back away from the light. Uh, went over to their knowledge base and it says, yes, we can open accounts for people located outside the United States. 
uh, um, from many countries if you'd like to confirm. So just shoot an email to support at Trade of Eight, and I will answer all these uh, in um, in the feed on YouTube as well. So support at Trade of Eight. I do know that they do not allow customers from Canada. So you cannot, if you're Canadian, uh, cust uh, if you're in Canada, you cannot work with Trade of Eight. But maybe they do support some countries in Europe. So that's that question there. Next. How does TradingView, does TradingView have tick charts? I have TradeStation account I'm thinking of connecting, but I want to have tick charts, thanks. Uh, no, darn it, it doesn't. So here's the data types that are available. Uh, bars, candle, hollow, Hakanashi line, area, baseline, Renko line, break, Kagi, uh, point and figure, and range, okay? I wish they would expose tick data. They have it, I mean, they certainly, you know, there's plenty of places where it's fed in. Uh, that way we could bring our brick wicks or our modified Renko bars that we'd like to trade in and we use those over on Ninja and we do have a version of them on TradeStation. Um, so unfortunately, no, there's no tick data and uh, from everything I can tell, even though these guys are owned by MultiCharts, MultiCharts offers tick data, you don't have tick data, so that's a bummer. Um, this one is a little long here. I did a video on uh, prop trading futures programs. Prop trading means uh, the ability to get access to trading capitals, no risk of your own, once you have gone through an evaluation period to, uh, to prove your worth as a trader. And this person, Bob Baker, is commenting about how he was kind of surprised or stunned in his words that once you quote, uh, quote unquote passed and got a live account, can I put the bunny quotes in there? Live, once you were live, you are still trading a demo account. And yes, that is actually the case at almost every one of these prop firms. And for a little while, they, I don't wanna say hid that fact, but they, um, they obfuscated it. They weren't as opaque, they were more opaque. They weren't really clear that that was the case. And some people felt kind of cheated. Uh, this video will probably go a little long if I went into all the details as to why that's actually a very good thing that you stay on what I would call live demo or paid out demo once you're once you're trading. And one of the reasons that it benefits traders, uh, and by the way, that's only a temporary status at most of these firms. Um, you go through your evaluation, you receive your bright shiny object, which is your account that you can now get paid out on. And all these firms found that there was a huge amount of churn uh, on those first live funded accounts because people kind of went crazy. Oh, I'm now I'm I've gone from demo to, to live and I'm going to try to take a take a shot since I have no risk of my own capital. And uh, a lot of them would blow up or not, you know, earn any money, let alone whether it was live, uh, live capital, they could actually take a withdrawal on. So they switch to this kind of model. It doesn't last forever. At some point, if you if you continue to do very well, you will officially be given a live account, but it really doesn't matter to you. You're paid out exactly what you should be paid out. If you earn that money in demo, they cover it. And you can probably figure out why they they chosen to do that. Because again, unfortunately, they know a lot of people don't say consistently profitable and they don't have to actually pay out that much money. That's just the truth. Now, if you hit the like button, subscribe to the Futures Fanatic channel and get notified of next time I'm doing videos and leave a comment. I'm gonna do my best to provide as much free, no cost um, education as I possibly can, including some longer form videos where I talk about uh, trading strategies that are very good for these types of programs and can help keep you funded and in the game. Um, so go ahead and do that right now if you haven't, uh, haven't already. I'll wait. One, two, three, thanks for hitting that like button. Okay, so one of the simplest reasons though why it's not a bad idea to stay on uh, sim once you're even in the live status and you've passed the evaluation is the data costs are a lot higher if you are a professional trader the cme in their infinite wisdom to ch ch tr uh, trade uh, um, charges somewhat outrageous uh, data fees to the brokers and in terms of those are passed on to uh, to individual traders if they are quote unquote classified as a professional. So the longer you can stay as a non-professional on a simulated account, the better it is for you economically. But again, if you stay profitable in these programs, you will officially be handed live capital to trade if that's something that's uh, an important little feather in your cap or milestone that you wanna move for. Okay, so, and that is the five firms I mentioned were in that video were Top Step Trader, U Profit Trader, Lilu, One Up, and uh, Earn to Trade. And all of them work the same. Once you go quote unquote live, I've said quote unquote a bunch of times. Once you have passed the evaluation and are in the live performance uh, status, you are going to still uh, be trading a demo account for a period of time. They all work the same. 
Okay, Futures Fanatic, Tastyworks doesn't have it yet. Well, I mentioned two, uh, two different things in this video about small oil. On July 12th, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange is launching a smaller micro contract for crude oil. You wanna maybe check that out if you've already somewhat familiar with crude oil markets or you're trading futures, you're probably gonna uh, know that, count, that date on your calendar. I was mentioning in this video another product called SMO, small oil from the small exchange, and it has been definitely available on Tasty. So I'll reply to this, this person and let them know it's been there the whole time and it was at the time I made this video. All right, uh, I get this occasionally. So Futures Fanatic, right, you're talking about Bitcoin futures for retail traders, but you don't actually talk about the chart. So it's clickbait at this point. I don't like to be accused of clickbait and I appreciate Sundance37's opinion. I know that I mentioned in the video three times though, and I'll mention it again. Uh, Having a guy like me go through all the contract details and descriptions of some of these products, I like to alert you to them and can tell you a little bit about how I'm trading them or how you can get access to them. But ultimately, when you're talking about futures products, you want to go to activetrader.cmegroup.com. You could just also go to cmegroup.com. Okay, so you're gonna to go to over to this right here and look what it brings up. It brings up the micro-sized crude oil, which I was just mentioning. All right, you can come over to search and you just wanna search for whatever contract it happens to be. The best place to get knowledgeable about any of these contracts is at the source, which is the CME and this particular site. So while I, um, I, will, uh, I did not go back and watch this video, Thank you, Sundance37, for leaving a comment here. If I did not talk about the product in enough detail uh, in terms of a tutorial about micro Bitcoin, I apologize. Um, if you want to know more about it, uh, go to the CME and that's the best place to find it. All right, next YouTube comment was interested in your opinion of TradeStation or Infinity Futures. Thanks. I like TradeStation. I programmed in easy language or I, 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 uh, I didn't program. I would. Uh, um, I would work with programmers on various projects uh, of which we built a dis different amounts of indicators and trading strategies on trading on TradeStation. I don't use it um, anymore though. I've just moved on to uh, to other platforms, but it's it's been there since the beginning. They do a nice job of supporting both futures and stocks and options, you know, in kind of a hybrid account. So technically, they're two separate accounts. But if you want to trade multi-asset classes, TradeStation is really good. They have good customer support. Uh, the technology is fantastic. Again, if you are uh, a, a more, um, if you have more of a developer sort of approach to the markets or automated trading, you can run a lot of back tests, and uh, it's a great platform. So I would recommend it. Infinity Futures, I believe, is now owned by ninja i'm pretty sure um, i'm almost sure so transact was uh, infinity futures was a wholly owned subsidiary of transact they were like an ib to the fcm or of, uh, of transact and then i believe ninja trader bought the whole thing um so i don't really i haven't worked with uh infinity in quite a while uh, probably back 2017 was the last time and their platforms were well behind i, I didn't think they were supporting nearly enough platforms uh, very good customer support and they did have brokers that um, from all around the world here in the US so they were supporting like Italy and France and parts of Europe and if you wanted to work with a firm that spoke in your native language then that was a, definitely a benefit um, Spanish of course as well they did a lot of work in Latin America but for me I never had a great relationship um, with the technology and uh, I did do some testing with it for another project so can't really comment much, much more than that, other than potentially Infinity will be able to use Ninja Trader going forward. I'll try to keep the channel updated on that if I learn more. Okay, I'm a little confused as to the percentage box here in the orders panel. I did a video about how to take, uh, uh, how to place stop profit and stop uh, orders. So here in the box is percentage shown. If I want to take profit at 2%, 1% of my sec, how would I do that in these tools? I don't know if I'll be able to go into all of that. Um, right away. One thing I did want to show is over here on the right hand side used to be a little wonky to get these areas. So there's two icons now here. If you want to open and close this trading panel, you do it with this little up and down arrow right here. And if you wanted to open and close the dome, you do it right here. That might have been there for a little while, but I was messing around with with this nonsense and coming up here to gears over here. So now you have the ability to open up the dome. I don't use the dome at all on trading view uh, and you can open up this trading panel right here. So uh, again, I don't think I'll be able to go into all of these questions here, but it, I did do another video. This video 
I did a few videos on tutorials on how to use TradingView. Uh, it's my primary charting and analysis package that we use in some of my trade rooms. Uh, and I do actually trade live and in sim on it uh, pretty much on a daily basis now for swing trading. If, if you're trying to do scalping uh, or, or have some more sophisticated trade management, this is still not the tool for you. Um, it gets the job done if it's sort of support and resistance and you're, re you're resting limit orders. But again, if you're looking for much more um, tight target trading, I call it, or scalping, uh, this is probably not the greatest tool. But anyhow, all you do is you, you'd, you'd come over here, uh, enter your, um, your instrument that you want to trade. Up at the top, you select market limit, stop or stop limit. Here's your price, the quantity. Um, and then you click the take profit and the stop loss. I've commented in the past about how they never change this from pips. It always says pips, which is a Forex term. It doesn't change it to ticks if you're trading futures or shares if you're trading stock, which is a bit of a bummer. So we're talking about ticks in the futures markets. And this take profit is 75 ticks. And this is uh, 25 ticks in terms of a stop loss. It gives you the price that that represents. So if I were to be a buyer here, I'd be taking profit at 42, 43.15 half. I'd be um, stopping out at 42.90 half. Here it is in dollars, and here it is as a percentage. And it's a percentage, it knows what your account balance is. So the account balance here is 51,892. This is actually in a um, top step uh, combine step two, which is a whole other story for another day. So 51,892. This profit represents 1.8% of that, and this stop loss is 0.6% of that. I did another video about how you will have a hard time not getting through these programs, or at least staying within the parameters, if you put your stop loss at about 0.30 per trade. I mean, that's one third of 1%, and the, per the, uh, the dollar amount is going to be based, uh, the percentage and the dollar amount are a reflection of the size of the account, which is about $52,000, okay? Uh, again, you can pop over to the channel here and, and search for some videos on TradingView where I do go into using this interface in a lot more detail. So hopefully I did a little bit of a recheck on that. Oh, and I remember looking at this one. It's the same thing. I can't believe there's still no videos on YouTube to show beginners how to fill in the trade box and understand what everything means. Well, here's the trade box. I think that's what they're calling talking about. And here's what everything means. Take profit simply means your profit target. Stop loss means your stop loss. And there's four variable here's uh, again, I just went through all this, so I won't go through it again. So um, if there's comments on this video, please hit the like, subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell notification so you're notified the next time I uh, broadcast. We're just about done with our mailbag episode here. But if you wanted even more detail or if you wanted to suggest a video I could do in more detail that would follow up any of these videos, please let me know. All right, I think that's about it. Yeah, that's about it. So we covered all that for uh, for tonight. Again, check out the channel. You can actually go and watch these videos for yourself. That'll give you a little bit more context for this mailbag episode where we look through the comments. I really appreciate everyone who does comment on my videos. It uh, makes uh, doing this a lot more engaging and it helps to know that uh, some of these videos help you out. That'll be it for tonight. My name is Rod, the Futures Fanatic, reminding you to stay green and trade like you mean it. Thanks.